Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and with the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro just released, I thought we would look back on the OnePlus 7T, which I'm currently using as my daily driver. Now, a lot of people use this as their daily phone over the likes of the iPhone, Pixel, and the best from Samsung, but why? Well, let's take a look. As always, we start with the design. Now the 7T is a great looking device even in 2020. Now you have a sandwich of glass and metal rails running around the edge. The glass on the back has a nice matte frosted design and comes in glacier blue and also the frosted silver which I have here. Now while the look and feel is nice and premium, it's also one of the slipperiest phones that I have ever used. I would recommend a nice case like this one direct from OnePlus. It also picks up a ton of fingerprints, so have a cloth to hand. Around back is where you then find the camera unit. Now it's a pretty big area, but it does hold three cameras and the flash, which we'll get onto later. The left hand side of the device is where you find the volume controls. The right hand side holds the power button and staple OnePlus feature, the profile switcher. Now this allows you to switch between loud, silent and vibrate really easily and is one of the many things that I think more manufacturers should do. And then the bottom of the device you have the speaker, SIM card tray and USB-C port. Now the speaker is also paired with the one on the front giving you stereo sound. And in regards to those speakers they do actually sound really good so here's a quick sample. Now the screen is a 6.5 inch 1080 by 2400 HDR 10 plus 90 hertz screen. Now that's a lot of specs, but the main thing to take away is the screen looks great. It's super smooth due to the 90 hertz panel, and unlike other refresh rate screens, this one is locked at 90. Now this does mean that animations, videos, games, they all look great, but you can switch it back down to 60 hertz to save a bit of battery life. But as we will soon find out, you don't really need to worry about that. You also have an in-screen fingerprint reader. Now this is super quick and responsive and I've had no issues or misreads. You do also have face unlock, but it's nothing like what you're gonna find on the iPhone. It's not necessarily the most secure thing out there, but it's the quickest way to get into the phone. Internally with the 7T, we have the Snapdragon 855 Plus paired with the Adreno 640 GPU. Now my model also has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now this is also UFS 3.0 storage, so it has a very fast read and write speed. Now this means that even when downloading huge applications like Call of Duty Mobile, it installs it super fast. Running on all that hardware, we have Android 10 along with Oxygen OS 10.0.8. Now there will also be an update to Android 11 at some point this year. Now I have said this a ton, but OnePlus has one of the best skins available for Android. Now I say skin, but it looks and feels very stock, but just with some extras. As you can see under customization, you can change the wallpaper, clock style, fingerprint animation, accent color, plus tons more. Now this is also where you change the theme from light to dark, if that's something that you're into. The rest of the OS is very stock and again, very fast and fluid. In regards to gaming performance, it's great. Graphic intense games like Asphalt 9 run amazing at the full 90 Hertz. Also fast paced multiplayer games like Call of Duty Mobile run great and again have that super fast frame rate which is great for Twitch shooters. Basically any game currently available on mobile is going to run great with no issues at all. It's also one of the small selection of Android phones that runs Fortnite at 60 frames per second with high graphic settings. So overall performance is amazing. Now it used to be that Pixel phones direct from Google used to have the best performance. However, more recently with OnePlus, even some of their older devices and obviously the brand new eight line of devices, the performance is incredible and probably the smoothest and fastest available performance on any Android phone. With regards to battery life, I have had no issues at all getting through basically two days all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're gonna be taxing the phone with a ton of graphic intense games, a lot of video recording, photo taking and things like that, yes, it's gonna wear the battery down, but that's where warp charge comes into play. With the included charger, you can get basically a full charge from zero to 100% in less than an hour, and you can basically get around 70% in about 30 minutes, so you don't really need to 
worry about it if you forget to charge your phone, just plop it on the charger for a short period of time and you've got enough charge basically for the rest of the day. Now onto something that I know a lot of you care about and that is the camera. Now we have a main wide shooter at 48 megapixels, f1.6 with a 26 millimeter lens. We then have the ultra wide coming in at 16 megapixels, f2.2 and a 17 millimeter equivalent. And lastly, you have the often forgotten about but very useful 2x telephoto lens at 12 megapixels, f2.2 and a 51mm lens. The camera can also shoot video up to 60 frames per second in full 4K resolution. Now, video looks great and it also takes advantage of the HDR10 Plus standard. Now, the camera app is well laid out with a ton of shooting modes like pro mode, slow mo, time lapse and loads more. But don't take my word for it, check out these sample images from the camera and also some of the video quality. As you can see the pictures and video quality is great and I've had no issues with exposure, HDR or focus and the video is reliable for everyday shots and it may not reach the amazing video quality of the newest iPhones but it's still great 4K 60 frames per second video. But back to the main question at the start of this video, is the OnePlus 7T still worth it in 2020 with the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro available? Well let's start with the price. The 7T comes in at £549 for 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. The new 8 is available at 599 with the same specs, 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage and the 8 Pro which is the biggest and best from OnePlus is now 799 which is a bit of a shame as OnePlus has always been good on price. So basically, are the 8 series of phones between 50 and 200 pounds better than what you're going to be getting with the OnePlus 7T which is still available? Now of course the newer phones will be a better overall device and top spec, but I still think picking up a 7T for less may be the better option for now, plus from what I've seen in regards to just raw specs, the 8 and the 8 Pro are kind of more like a 7.5 as opposed to a massive jump in generation from the last device from OnePlus. And that's going to do it guys for this video and quick look back on the OnePlus 7T. Now let me know in the comments section below what phone you're currently using and if you think that the bleeding edge tech is worth the heavy asking price of 800 to 1000 pounds. Now for me, if I can get a last gen phone for cheap or at the end of its life cycle, then I will because at the moment there's not massive differences between different versions of phones as they're coming out. We're kind of nearly hitting that ceiling of what a phone can actually do. Now if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like down below and if you didn't enjoy it a dislike is perfectly fine. If you've got any questions or comments let me know down below that like button in the comments section or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. 
Also down there you will see that subscribe button and over 90% of you currently watching aren't actually subscribed so don't forget to hit that button and turn on notifications so you're notified anytime I post a new video here on the channel. Links for everything featured in this video as always are down below. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.